Thank you for joining today's webinar. Our speaker is Lael Chung, a chemist for Lycor Biosciences. Lael, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Lael Chung. I'm a chemist working at Lycor Biosciences in Lincoln, Nebraska. My research is focused on developing reagent products for in vitro and in vivo bioanalysis. Also with us today are a couple of panelists. Let's let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sean Mishnick, and I'm a technical product specialist for marketing. Our panelists will be answering your questions throughout the webinar today. Okay, Lael, let me give you presenter control so we can begin. Thank you for joining our webinar today. I will be introducing you to one of our new product families, IR dye reagents for click chemistry. How important is multiple target detection in bioanalysis? A growing body of research shows that multiplexed in vitro techniques can greatly improve the understanding of complex biological processes, including those involved in disease response to drug therapy, as well as cellular differentiation. Fluorescence detection, especially in the near-infrared region, offers a convenient method for analyzing multiple biomar biomarkers in a single sample. LICOR is at the forefront of near-infrared analysis in biological systems. IR dye reagents used with appropriate instruments can overcome limitations associated with other detection methods such as signal decay in radioactive assays. Near-infrared avoids interference caused by autofluorescence from common laboratory consumables and biological samples. Furthermore, near-infrared detection facilitates signal quantitation over a wide dynamic range, which can provide better assessments of signaling pathways. Most importantly, Many of the advantages conferred by near-infrared in vitro experiments can often be translated to in vivo studies on cells and whole organisms. Many of you may already be familiar with the high-quality IR dye antibodies that we supply for Western blot applications. In addition to providing reliable products for conventional methods, we at Lycor strive to enable our customers to try novel and high-impact techniques. Click chemistry is one such technique that is rapidly gaining interest among biological researchers as a viable alternative to affinity-based detection. We are pleased to announce the release of IR dye reagents especially designed for this exciting technique. For those of you who are unfamiliar with click chemistry, we will take a few minutes to examine its key features. Click chemistry is comprised of reactions between pairs of reagents that have high fidelity for each other. In addition to being highly chemoselective, click chemistry is easy to perform, versatile, and delivers stable products in high yields. Since the term was coined by Professor Sharpless and co-workers in 2001, a plethora of reactions have been developed that fall under the auspices of click chemistry. Because the diversity of click chemistry applications is beyond the scope of this webinar, I will focus on variations that have been successfully applied to bioanalysis. Click chemistry reactions can be classified into two broad categories, copper-free and copper-catalyzed. An example of a reagent pair that undergoes copper-free click chemistry is DBCO and azide. Conversely, copper-catalyzed click chemistry is exemplified by the azide and alkyne reagent pair. One important aspect to note is that the azide reagent can participate in either copper-free or copper catalyzed click chemistry. Let us examine these two reaction categories in slightly more detail. This graphic shows a copper free click reaction between a dye bearing DBCO reagent and an azide bearing biomolecule. The DBCO group will react specifically and spontaneously with the azide group under physiological conditions. In the reaction, multiple covalent bonds are formed between the DBCO and azide groups delivering a robustly ligated biomolecule. Unlike other commonly used labeling reagents such as NHS esters, DBCO and A-side groups are resistant to hydrolysis over a broad pH range. Under physiological conditions, DBCO and A-side groups do not react with naturally occurring functional groups such as amines and hydroxyls. The specific chemical reactivity inherent to click chemistry reagents demonstrates their bioorthogonality, a concept introduced by Professor Bertozzi and co-workers in 2003. Furthermore, 
The click reaction between DBCO and azide is largely independent of functional group placement. Thus, as the bottom graphic shows, the respective locations of the reactive groups can be switched in order to optimize the ligation. Now that we have briefly reviewed copper-free click chemistry, let us examine the more established copper-catalyzed variation. This graphic shows a copper-catalyzed click reaction between a dye-bearing alkyne reagent and an azide-bearing biomolecule. The alkyne group will, rea will react specifically with the azide group only in the presence of a copper catalyst, or in some cases at extremely high temperatures. As with the copper-free method, the copper-catalyzed reaction forms multiple covalent bonds between the alkyne and azide groups delivering a robustly ligated biomolecule. Similarly, the alkyne and azide groups are resistant to hydrolysis over a biologically relevant pH range. Furthermore, alkyne and azide groups demonstrate bioorthogonality, that is, they do not react with most naturally occurring functional groups such as amines and hydroxyls. In addition, the placement of alkyne and azide groups can be switched in order to optimize the ligation. Before we continue to the next section, let us take some time to ask the audience a poll question. Ashley, would you mind taking care of that? Sure, Leia. Uh, the poll should be up on the screen, and it is, are you currently using click chemistry reagents in your research? You can choose the radio button next to the answer, yes, copper catalyzed reactions, yes, copper free reactions, yes, both copper catalyzed and copper free reactions, no, but I plan to in the future, or simply no. Go ahead and click the button next to your answer, and we will give everyone just a couple moments to choose. Thank you for your answers. I'm going to go ahead and close our poll question now. Leo? So based on your responses, we can see that several of you are already examining click chemistry in your research. Although it originated as a highly specific method for molecular ligation, click chemistry continues to evolve as a versatile method for addressing the disparate needs of biological researchers. Click chemistry can facilitate the construction and elaboration of biological probes, especially in situations requiring alternatives to traditional labeling technologies such as NHS ester. Click chemistry reagents can serve as specifically reactive tags that do not disrupt the normal functions of labeled biomolecules. This bioorthogonality has been particularly helpful in the study of protein prost translational modifications, protein protein interactions, and dynamic turnover of biomolecules. Most importantly, click chemistry methods may be readily adapted to existing workflows for common molecular biology experiments. Using innovative experimental designs, biological researchers have harnessed the power of click chemistry in a multitude of experiments. The biological utility of click chemistry is manifested by over 1,000 publications on proteomics applications alone and over 800 publications on in vivo imaging applications. Therefore, ample scientific ev evidence supports the assertion that click chemistry can expedite both the discovery and evaluation of biomarkers for normal and disease associated processes. So, are there general guidelines for choosing which type of click chemistry to use in an experiment? A copper-free reaction, such as that between DBCO and azide, is generally considered biocompatible, meaning that it is suitable for studies on live cells or whole animals. Conversely, a copper-catalyzed reaction between alkyne and azide is generally not considered biocompatible because of the cytotoxicity associated with copper reagents. Therefore, copper-catalyzed click chemistry is best suited for studies of fixed cells and cell lysates. However, chemical kinetic studies have shown that copper-catalyzed reactions tend to be faster than the corresponding copper-free reactions. Again, these are general guidelines based on literature reports. 
so unprecedented experiments would warrant investigating both chemical options. Click chemistry provides another method for interrogating post-translational modification of proteins. Various sugars, amino acids, lipids, and nucleotides have been made available as their azide or alkyne analogs. These so-called click nutrients are designed to be functionally indistinguishable from their natural counterparts in a manner analogous to radioisotopically labeled nutrients. Cells and even multicellular organisms can be grown in media enriched with click nutrients without overtly deleterious side effects, once again attesting to the bioorthogonality of click functional groups. In many cases, the click nutrients are metabolized by the same pathways as their natural counterparts. They can become incorporated into proteins and other biomolecules with intact azides or alkynes. In the graphic shown here, the pendant azide can subsequently undergo copper-free click chemistry with a dye labeled DBCO. This technique demonstrates how click chemistry can be used to detect biomarkers for which there may not be suitable antibodies. Glycosylation is one type of post-translational modification that has been effectively probed by click chemistry. In particular, multiple studies have been performed using mannaz, an azide-containing analog of the sugar N-acetyl monosamine. The flowchart on the left side describes how IR dye technology can be used to detect glycoproteins that have been metabolically labeled with mannaz. N-acetyl monosamine is converted by cells into sialic acid, which is often appended to the termini of oligosaccharides on glycoproteins. Cellular profiles of sialic acid are dynamic and often correlate with complex biological processes ranging from cancer metastasis to pathogenic infection. Mannaz undergoes essentially the same metabolic processing to furnish glycoproteins bearing terminal azides. On live cells, these azide-bearing glycoproteins can then be labeled with an appropriate IR dye reagent, such as IR dye 800CW, DBCO, by copper-free click chemistry. The dye labeled glycoproteins can then be imaged by methods such as fluorescence microscopy. The left image shows a control experiment wherein A431 cells, grown in the absence of the click sugar mannaz, the, li the live cells are subsequently treated with IR dye 800CW DBCO. As you can see, the click dye did not label the native cell surface glycoproteins, demonstrating that, DB that the DBCO group is inert towards amine groups found naturally in proteins. Conversely, the right image shows a detection experiment wherein A431 cells were pre-fed with the click sugar mannaz after allowing metabolic incorporation of mannaz into glycoproteins and other glycans, the live cells were washed and treated with the IR dye reagent 800CW DBCO. Additional control experiments attest to the high specific reactivity of click chemistry reagents. The left image shows an experiment wherein A431 cells were prefed with the click sugar mannaz and then subsequently treated with the non-reactive IR dye 800CW carboxylate. As you can see, the non-reactive dye did not appear to label the modified cell surface glycoproteins. Again, the right image shows the aforementioned detection experiment wherein A431 cells were prefed with the click sugar mannaz and then subsequently treated with IR dye 800CW DBCO. Furthermore, this set of experiments demonstrates another key feature of IR dye technology, namely the high water solubility of IR dye derivatives. In both control experiments A and B, unreacted dyes could easily be washed with PBS to minimize background signals from nonspecific dye protein interactions. In summary, click chemistry has greatly advanced the field of bioanalysis. Lycor is pleased to offer you IR dye reagents for both copper-free and copper-catalyzed click chemistry in our most popular colors, 800CW, 680RD, and 650. To reiterate, IR dye DBCO reagents are suitable for copper-free methods, alkyne reagents are suitable for copper-catalyzed methods, and azide reagents are capable of both. 
We thank you for attending our webinar today, and will gladly answer any questions that may that you may have regarding this powerful technology. Thank you, Lael. I'd like to let everyone know that they can watch for a follow-up email with a discount coupon for our IR dye reagents for Click Chemistry. And for more information, you can visit us at lycor.com. Just click on the Click Chemistry Reagents page, and you can view our new products there. So our first question from the audience is, are the IR dye click reagents membrane permeable? Well, as far as we know, the IR dye click reagents, as well as our other IR dye reagents, will not cross intact cell membranes. In order to um, reach intracellular targets bearing the appropriate click groups, the cells would probably have to, the cell membranes would probably have to be uh, permeabilized. All right, thank you. Our second question is, if we want to use different chemistries to label a biomolecule with different groups, should we use click chemistry at the beginning or the end of the labeling sequence? Well, because the reactions that comprise click chemistry um, are inherently versatile, there really is no preference with regards to placement of the reagents. However, in designing your synthetic scheme, um, it is appropriate to avoid exposing the dye or other appended group to incompatible reagents in downstream reactions. So again, it would take some, um, some synthetic skill to design the right synthetic sequence to make sure that none of the, um, that all the modifications will survive to the end of the process. Thanks, Lael. And our final question is, if we use click chemistry to label proteins with a Lycor dye, how do we determine the dye to protein ratio? The, well, the dye to protein ratio uh, can be determined just like you would do for a protein labeled with NHS esters. So again, it's typically through uh, UV vis absorption. Alternatively, you can use um, advanced mass spec techniques if you have access to the appropriate facilities. Uh, for more information, uh, you can actually refer to the pack inserts that come with all of our reactive dyes, not just the click dyes. Thank you, Lael. It looks like that's all the time we have for questions. Thank you for taking the time to participate in the webinar today. We will be sending information on how to access a recording of this session very soon. Please watch your email or www.lycor.com slash webinars for details on how to watch the replay. Our panelists are still answering questions, so please stick around if you have a question that has not been answered. Or feel free to give us your contact information if you'd rather receive an email response. We will be taking questions for a little while longer, so you may still submit any questions you have. Lastly, please let us know how we can improve our webinars by answering the post-event survey questions when you exit this webinar. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you at our next session.